Okay, so this is 3050, week one, lecture three. So today we're going to go through Laplace transforms. Okay, transforms So today, uh, it's basically sections, I believe 2, 1 through 2, 3 in book, right? So three things, right? Uh, definition of the Laplace transform, the one-sided Laplace transform. Inverse Laplace transforms. And uh, transfer functions. So today that's what we're going to do. Next time we'll do MATLAB, but I'll address that towards the end of lecture. So what is the Laplace transform? The Laplace transform. So what is a transform before this? So a transform is moving from one domain to the other. So for example, x squared plus y squared equals one, and it is actually x squared plus y squared equals four, defines what object? Circle. So one defines a circle. What's the center of the circle? Where's the center of the circle? Yeah, with center 0, 0, what's the radius? 2. And radius 2. But there's another way, so I'll put a double arrow. So this is a transform, right? You can plot this in the Cartesian plane. So here is x, here is y. So here is the center, and here is 2, negative 2. Well, this is 2, comma 0, negative 2, comma 0, uh, 0, comma 2. Well, that's not going to look like a circle. So. drawing but so and this is 0 comma negative 2 ideally okay so in other words this is a transform right they both represent the same object what you use depends on what the problem is you can't say one is better than the other necessarily yeah this is visual it's great right but anyway a Laplace transform is similar in idea that is Laplace transform takes a function on the set of real numbers, reals to reals, okay? That's what this is. This is actually a real number. And if you do a transform, the Laplace transform, you get a function in the complex domain, okay? Sort of complex. So reals to reals, complex to complex. I'm pretty certain that when Laplace came up, Pierre Simon Laplace, when he came up with the Laplace transform, it wasn't for electrical engineering. I think it was the heat equation. Right? He was doing something else. But the reason why we use the Laplace transform is it allows us to rewrite different, there are two reasons. Reason number one, it allows us to rewrite differential equations in terms of algebraic equations, but it's not like perpetual motion that you get like no, energy for nothing. That's never true. But it's in the complex domain. So you have to deal with complex numbers. It's not necessarily difficult, but it's a added complexity. There's nothing complex about complex numbers. Right? They're just called complex numbers. Uh, point number one. Laplace transforms allows us to represent a differential equation as an algebraic equation, polynomial equation in the complex domain. Point number two. It allows us in engineering to define something called as the transfer function. And as you will see in this class, throughout this class, just like you can interpret the circle as a picture, there is a corresponding picture in the S plane okay, for your transfer function. It's very useful for control system design. There's an entire method called the root locus, right? That's completely dependent on the S plane, which you will learn in 3720. Okay. It's a very intuitive method. You could claim, yeah, the uh, board diagram approach to control systems also it can be 
interpreted in the S plane, but it's easier to interpret boat diagrams using uh, boat plots. Okay. I mean, sorry, it's in easier to interpret boat diagrams using frequency response. Okay. So bottom line is the Laplace transform is very useful in controlled systems engineering. That's why we need to know about it. Okay. Just like there is the Laplace transform takes from time to S, okay, so this is usually time. Okay. This is called as the S domain because S is a complex number of the type defined as sigma plus j omega. That's how it's defined. It's a complex domain. That's a Laplace transform. Correspondingly, there's an inverse Laplace transform. So note, however, that we will not use the definition of only the inverse. Okay, We will use the definition of the Laplace transform, but we won't use the definition of the inverse Laplace transform because that, because the, the definition, because the L inverse definition, DEFN is an abbreviation for definition, involves complex contour integration, okay? And this is a course in complex analysis in math. Right? Rather, to compute inverse Laplace transforms, okay, we will use, does anybody remember uh, how you computed Laplace transforms in 2070 or its equivalent, yes? Huh? You didn't do Laplace transforms in 2070? Okay, so you did. How did you compute the inverse Laplace transform? What did you do? Yeah, partial fra we'll use partial fraction expansion and tables, okay? But I'll just write partial fraction expansion because if you know the Laplace transforms of common functions by from memory, and in principle, in engineering, this is how it's done. The inverse Laplace transform through contour integration, I don't know how to do it. Okay? It's a more uh, mathematical approach. And actually, there's one place where it'll actually use contour integrals in control engineering. And that's in 3720 when you do Nyquist diagrams. Okay? The contour all, uh, indirectly comes in over there, but it's 3720. We're not going to talk about it. But first, let us look at the definition of the Laplace transform because that's not hard to understand. It's an improper integral. Okay? Also note, however, also note that we will assume that the Laplace transform is well defined. Okay. In other words, We will not discuss the region of convergence. We will not discuss ROC or region of convergence. This topic is actually reserved. It's usually discussed in a course on Singleton systems. Okay, If you take the Singleton systems course at MSOE, they should discuss this. In other words, there are some functions for which you can't find the Laplace transform. And we're not going to discuss that. And even for functions for which you can find the Laplace transform, it's only defined for a specific uh, region in the S plane. And we're not going to talk about this. Okay? We'll just assume the Laplace transform is well defined. So let us look at the definition. It's very important. Okay? Here is the definition. So the first of all, how do you write this? You say the Laplace transform of a function f, usually this is f of t, okay? is the Laplace transform is a function in the S domain. Once you do take the Laplace transforms, in other words, this is equal to F. So you get F of S, is that clear? Is defined as, again, this is the one-sided Laplace transform, tau going from zero minus to infinity. And I write here zero minus because we will incorporate initial conditions into our Laplace transform. So f of tau 
e to the minus s tau d tau okay and again like i said s is sigma plus j omega it's this, it's in the sort of complex number so in other words if you look at this integral okay oops you can see that what's left is a function of s because tau gets integrated out right and you will see how this is useful when we take the laplace transform of um, differential equations quote unquote the derivative operator so that we will see actually uh, if you go in here we'll see it next time not today so we'll when you look at uh, transfer functions we will look at it and then today what i'll do is i'll do the laplace transform then i'll talk about dynamic systems what they are right yesterday we briefly touched into what the course does when we looked at a mechanical system versus electrical system dynamical but then what is exactly meant by dynamical what is exactly meant by system we'll look at it today because it's very important you understand the context of what what's going on right not only in this class in any class or anything right? so let's look at an example so what i'll do in lecture so i'll do a yeah, question please oh ec this means element of complex numbers so this is a math symbol so it's epsilon okay how about this something like that i mean that, that's why i don't write it like that because i write epsilon like this so element of for example uh three is an element of the set two three four okay so this means element of or belongs to epsilon okay, that's what it is oh you really don't say epsilon it's, it's in okay any other questions all right so what i'll usually do in lecture is i'll do skill assessment exercises from the book right i won't do back of the book problems i might depending on like what's good uh let me just make sure uh, let's see where are books i think i have yeah i do have it this is the book you need okay and there's a good question asked about uh the other book i recommended it's by i don't know if i'm online so it looks like i'm not online so let me just get online the other book i recommended is by ogata okay so let me enable this and while it's logging in it's spelled oh man so i have to log in so i'll do this in a short time but katsu hiko ogata just search for uh, ogata okay oops there it's called modern control engineering but the book we will use is right here so i'll search for this once i'm online but the book for the course is this one norman nisse's control systems engineering it's a good book right so let's go I think this was on page 44 we wasn't on 44 yeah so let's look at this okay skill assessment exercise find the laplace transform of this so oops this is why i need to get my keyboard working there and take a snapshot so and of course like it says here you should try and access the book's companion website he has like a lot of useful information uh in addition to what's in the book All right, find the Laplace transform of f of t, uh, t e to the minus five t. Okay, this is usually called as a gust function. So this is a gust function, g u s t, because it could be used to be model, it could be used to model a wind gust. Okay, because if you plot it, initially the function grows because of the t, but the decaying exponential quickly takes over, and as t goes to infinity, what is the value of this function? as t goes to infinity what's the value of this function zero 
but it's not infinity. So basically, it initially starts and it dies out. So uh, just as an aside, this call as a gust function. Okay, so here is the solution. So let's do two approaches. Approach one, which you should practice. Okay, use definition. Therefore, so here is our definition one. Okay, so one implies f of s, the Laplace transform of f of t is zero minus to infinity. Just plug in on uh, tau e to the minus five tau uh, e to the minus s tau d tau. Okay. So this is s. This is tau. So in other words, this becomes integral 0 minus to infinity tau e to the minus s plus 5 tau d tau. Okay? So, how would you integrate this? Don't tell me you, have to, you can use MATLAB. Yes, you can. All right. Or you can use Wolfram Alpha, whatever you want. But should, what there are a lot of things which your calculator cannot do, okay. specifically proofs. So it's very important that you know not only because your calculator can do it, but doing this by hand gives you an insight that you cannot gain by using a calculator or MATLAB. You should always use only calculator or MATLAB to verify if your answers are correct. Okay. Simulators, computers. But how do we? What is the mathematical technique you will use to integrate this? There's, no substitution won't work. I don't think substitution will work. What are the mathematical integration techniques that you know of? No, not partial fraction. Partial fraction won't work here. Yeah, what is that called? Integration by parts. Okay, so you integrate by parts. So I'll set it up for you. Integrate by parts, and the integration by parts is integral u dv is uv minus integral v du. Of course, there's an indefinite integral I've written. And you appropriately add limits over here. But then you have to pick your u and you have to pick your v. right? So what do you do? So integral 0 minus to infinity. So what is it? So you can, does this help? So what is your V? That's my question. Huh? No, not T. There is no T here. So my point here is this will not help because you're increasing the power on tau, right? So this actually doesn't work. In the sense, it won't help you finish the integral. So let's tr let's try this. Let's leave it as tau, and then try this. The derivative, this is with respect to tau, if you want to be more specific, e to the minus s plus phi tau over negative s plus phi. Yes? Make sense? So in other words, the derivative of e to the alpha x with respect to x is alpha e to the alpha x, correct? So the alpha here is minus s plus phi. Remember, s is a constant with respect to tau. So the negative s plus phi cancels. And then by the chain rule, you get d tau. So you get this back from here. Is that clear? Now, beautifully, this is your u. This is your v. Yes? This is u, v. Fine, allow access. Ah. Come on, there you go. All right, so UV. Then you put a tau here. Tau going from 0 minus to infinity minus integral V. d 
du d tau and then tau going from 0 minus to infinity is that clear so let's keep going so what do you get so what's this so is this clear Any questions on this? How much time do we have? Oh, we have plenty of time. Any questions on this? All right, so what happens here? What does this reduce to? So you plug in for tau, right? So what happens as tau tends to infinity? Yeah, the E term goes to zero. This dominates tau, right? Remember I told you for some functions, Laplace transform is not defined. So let's say this was e to the tau squared. Okay, you're, you're in trouble. But the good, the good news is this is linear, this is exponential. As tau goes to infinity, this dies out. S is simply a constant. S doesn't do anything. Yes. Okay, now what happens as tau goes to zero minus? What happens to this? Zero. Because this guy is one. Yes, but this fellow is very, very close to zero. It's like negative point zero one, right? Zero minus. That's what it means. It's approaching zero from the left hand side. Remember these from limits, okay? And the reason why we use zero minus is we want to incorporate initial conditions. That is what happens before your switches move, etc. Okay? And you will see why on Monday as to why this is zero minus. But anyway, you understand that this is zero. It just drops out beautifully. So this is 1 over s plus 5, yes, uh, from here. So negative, negative, 1 over s plus 5. s is a constant with respect to tau. Pull it out of the in integral. Now what about this guy? Nah. Nah. The problem with the tablet is it's hard to write uh, when the... I mean, the font size is pretty small. It doesn't read pretty well. Okay. So now if you integrate this, you again, this is simple. So again, the integration variable is tau. So this guy is constant. But notice now, so this is tau going from 0 minus to infinity. Okay. Notice now, unlike this here, there is no tau here. Okay. That's what the integration by parts helped us. It helped us absorb the tau in. So what happens now to this? Just be careful of the signs, S I G N. So this is uh, tau turning to infinity minus tau turning to zero minus, but there's a negative here, so be careful. So what is this simplify to? So what does that simplify to? Uh, be careful, it's not one. What happens to the infinite term? Remember, tau is going to infinity. S is a constant. Okay. So as tau goes to infinity, what happens to this? Zero. Okay, because this guy goes to zero. Is that clear? This is a constant. If you want, you can absorb the negative sign into the limits of integration. Just flip it if you if you want. Right? Sorry. This one, no, just okay. Let's be careful. Right? So, what I'm going to do is hold on, let's see if this makes more sense. So, instead of doing this, I'm going to take the negative sign and absorb it in here. So, this is tau tending to zero minus and then tau tending to infinity. Okay, so I flipped this. Okay, now what happens here? That's right. So it's my point is it's not negative 1 over s plus 5. You got to be careful. The negative sign. Okay, look at this. Tell me now what this simplifies to. So this one is equal to this. I took the negative sign and I absorbed it in here. Okay. So what does this simplify to? 1 over s plus 5. 
So in other words, this is 1 over s plus 5, the whole square. Actually, that's right, but let me write it like the way they write it. Okay, so this is using the definition, the Laplace transform of t e to the mi minus 5t is 1 over s plus 5, the whole square. Okay, that's one way to do the Laplace transform. And I recommend you do quite a few of these so you get comfortable with this because you have to do this integration somewhere along the road. Another way, and this is also very important, so this is approach one. So any questions on this? Approach one, use definition. There's another way, which is approach two. So this is use tables 2.1 and 2.2. Okay, very, very important that you know how to use these tables. So let's hopefully... Keyboard's active. Let's collapse this. I really don't need this. So scrolling up here. Here's table 2.2. Let's go to table 2.1 first. Here's table 2.1. Let me copy this out. So what I recommend you do is you derive by hand these Laplace transforms. Okay. Now something important: the Laplace trans this delta function is very interesting. Okay. I won't cover the delta function today. I'll cover it on Monday. Okay. But for example, you should be able to derive the Laplace transform of all the other functions using the definition. And it makes very good practice uh, for you to really understand integration. So I recommend you do it. And then, oops. Okay. So let's look at tables 2.1 and 2.2. And whoops. table 2.2 okay so let's recall what we want to find that is we want to find so Laplace recall that we want to find the Laplace transform of f of t uh, let's see Laplace transform of f of t is t e to the minus 5t, yes? So we want to find. So how do we use these two tables to figure out the Laplace transform of this without like using the definition? What would you do? Huh? Take the t n. Okay, so, okay, Scott's right. So from table 2.1, which item do you use? And from table 2.2, which item do you use? Tell me that specifically. So let me zoom in. If you can't see this here, refer to your book. So from this table, what item do you use for this Laplace transform of this? And from this table, what item do you use? I mean, there are... You can only use table 2.1 one if you want also so substitute what s plus a in for what s squared okay so what's your a five so in other words it's basically This one, okay. And this one, right? 
So this is the property that actually tells you you can do that. Laplace transform e to the minus a t f of t is f of s plus a. So what is your f of t? It's t u of t. Yes. So Laplace transform of t u of t is one over s squared. So this is your f of t. Okay. Therefore, you have. Let me write it down here. Using the fact that Laplace transform of e to the minus a t f of t is f of s plus a, where f of t is t u of t, okay. uh, and a is equal to five, we get Laplace transform of t e to the minus five t u of t is one over s plus five the whole square because why the Laplace transform of t u of t is one over s squared you just substitute f of s plus five okay you get one over s plus five squared so again you should only use these tables when you're once you're eventually comfortable with this definition this one okay and you can also check in your book it is 1 over s plus 5 the whole squared the laplace transform of this okay any questions all right so on monday we will look at the direct delta function and also the laplace transform of uh, the derivatives okay basically this one because as you can see right here you incorporate initial conditions that's why we did zero minus i will conclude Lapla inverse laplace transforms by looking at partial fraction expansions but for the rest of the hour what i want to do is like the syllabus says i want to talk about what do you mean by dynamic and what do you mean by system okay more importantly what do you mean by a system first and then dynamic but actually let's cover dynamic first so dynamic, or more technically, thanks to Dr. Joel Thomas, non-stationary systems. Okay. So dynamic systems are systems that um, that are described. There are two R's, but I'm sorry about that. Described by. Systems that are described by differential equations. Okay, they're dynamic. They change with time, the behavior of the system. That's not that hard to understand, but what's even more, what's difficult to understand is what is a system? So a system is a function of a function space. Okay, for example, your amplifier is an example of a system because it takes in a sound wave, an entire function of time. Yes? Not a single point. A function is from a point to point. Okay? System is a function of a function. And this difference is very, very subtle. Okay? And then your output you get is amplified sound wave of time okay just a little amplifier gain block now where the difference between a system and a function is very apparent is when you talk about a linear function versus a linear system okay so the definition of a linear system are uh, so definition for linear system these systems satisfy the principle of superposition 
Okay. Does any everybody have heard of superposition? What is superposition? In English, like what is it? Response of the sum equals what? Sum of the responses. That's superposition. My point is, in other words, linear systems are, this is my point, are roughly, you could say, described, I mean, it's not exactly correct, and you'll see why, by a straight line. You might have the idea that linear means described by a straight line. Yes? But that's not correct. In the context of a linear system. So let's take an example. Let's take examples. Example one. Uh, let's take our amplifier system. So let's say I have AX. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, so X is my input, Y is my output. Yes? So the question is, is the system above linear? So let's say you look at a, so here is a system. Here is a function. Yes? So the function to assuming A is positive. That's the linear function, yes? Passes through the origin. Just assuming A is positive. So looking at this, it's a straight line. So would you say the system is linear? Yes or no? Yes, but then you have to prove it using superposition. So answer yes because of superposition so a of alpha x1 plus alpha x2 suppose you have instead of x signal x, x assume x is a function of time All right, let's, we always deal with functions of time in this class so response of the sum is what? So I'm taking alpha x1 plus alpha x2, passing it through A. Since A is a constant, I can distribute it like this. Yes? And you can do alpha is also a constant. A of x1 plus alpha A of x2. So this implies... Uh, actually, let's not call this alpha. I'm sorry. Let's call this beta. It doesn't have to be alpha. I don't know why you're alpha. beta, okay, it's more sense, which implies superposition is satisfied, yes? Okay, so system is linear. All right, so what about this? In example two, so let's say I have another system, A, X, plus B, okay? Is this system linear? So I take a signal X of T, scale it by A and add it to B. Is this linear? No, it's not linear. Try to prove it using superposition. This is not linear. But if you do Y equals AX plus B, yes, assuming... A is positive and B is positive. So how does this, uh, so here is the y-intercept B, x equals 0, okay? So this is some passing through somewhere with slope A. Yes, and here is 0, comma 0. Yes? This is a linear function, right? But this system is not linear. Note system above is not linear. It's called affine, actually. Called an affine system. It's almost linear. Consider superposition. So, 
So A of alpha, let me use alpha 1 and alpha 2 so you won't get confused with beta. Alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus beta, oh, sorry, plus B, I'm sorry. That's the response of the sum, yes? A scaled sum, okay? Equals what? Expand this out. You get alpha 1 A of x1 plus alpha 2 A of x2 plus B, okay? Which is not equal to sum of the responses. What's the sum of the responses? So if I pass alpha 1 x1 through the system, and then I pass alpha 2 x2 through the system, and then I add, what do I get? So what am I going to get? Alpha 1 ax1. So let me just not put the brackets here, because it looks like it's a of x1. It's not. Yeah, what is it? Alpha 1 A of X1 plus? Plus 2B, okay? So unless B is 0, which it was for here, they're not the same. Yeah. No. No, that's not, in, that's not the reason why intuitively, no. The intuitive reason why is this system adds a DC component, okay? Linear systems never change frequency. This one does. The effect of B is adding a DC component. Put a sine wave in here, okay? So if you put a sine wave into the system, you get a, a sine of X of T plus B, a DC offset, okay? Whereas this system doesn't add a DC offset. So in other words, this system adds a frequency component at zero. It changes the frequency of the output as opposed to the input. It's a corner case. It's zero, but it's still not linear. Okay. It's a very subtle point. This is a question they actually ask. It's a common question they ask in graduate school, like school signals and systems courses. It's a very easy point to get tripped up on. It's a very subtle point. But the intuitive reason why is this system adds a DC component. It adds a frequency. It adds a zero frequency. And linear systems never do that. Linear systems never change the output frequency as opposed to the input frequency. When you have a low-pass filter, the output frequency, an RC filter, the output frequency is the same as the input frequency, except the amplitude probably ch definitely changes depending on where you are. Okay. The frequency does not change. Okay, so we are running out of time. We have only five more minutes. Yeah, question. Oh, scroll down, sorry. Thank you. So, next time what we will do is, we will look at, like I said, the Della functions, and where this is important, this discussion of linearity, is if we look at table 2.2, we only look at the Laplace transforms of linear derivatives. Okay. I'm not talking about uh, linear functions. Okay. The, we only take Laplace transforms of linear constant coefficient ordinary differential equations, because that's where it is most useful, okay, Laplace transform. And the good news is most practical systems, actually 90% of all systems we'll deal with in this class and 90% of all systems in, you'll deal with in undergraduate engineering are linear, okay, when you talk about control systems. So you figure out around what point you want your system to operate on and you just operate around that point, you linearize it. Okay, so... So the idea, so the, basically the point in the last or one third of the class is linear systems satisfy superposition. That's it. No ifs and buts. Okay. You can't think about straight lines. This is a counter example. Okay. Just because it's quote unquote a straight line. Okay. I mean, this could be X of T. This could be Y of T. You will still get a straight line. Yes. But the system is not linear. Because it adds intuitively a DC component. All right, we're done. So next time, uh, bring your laptops. We'll also do MATLAB. Make sure you have it.